A major challenge that you will encounter when building a custom vehicle is welding on flares or any other custom parts that are relatively intricate. In this video, we're going to cover how we weld this quarter panel onto our Porsche 928 wide-body project. But before we go into cutting anything on this quarter panel, we need to ensure that the rear alignment is correct. So what we did was we set the toe in the back and ride height just roughly so that we know that when we actually end up welding on the quarter panel, things will be copacetic because we don't want anything to collide, rub paint off, scratch a wheel. So we went ahead and just roughly aligned the rear end with a tape measure and some other measurements just to get it close. So now we're ready to adjust the quarter panel down here because right now it's a little, it's pretty close in the back edge compared to the front. So we're gonna adjust the quarter panel so that the wheel spacing is correct. And then after that, we're gonna take the quarter panel off and we're gonna start cutting away. So hopefully by the end of this video, this will give you a little bit more insight on your own projects so that when you're welding panels on your cars, you won't encounter any major problems. Be gone. You have no power here. That, I think that that's plenty of space right there. It feels relatively equal too. I mean, I can yeah. skim my finger. That's it. That's my boy. Now, the plus side to this whole car, because it's older, it does not have an inner wheel well. So typically, like, especially newer cars, have these tubs in the inside. Like the Slandos, for example, I had to make a new tub that adds inner structure to this for the unibody. Because this is an older vehicle, it doesn't have it. It's just the skin on the outside and all the structural stuff's in the inside. So, this edge here can be easily tweaked even after we have it welded on. I can hammer and dolly, shrink, stretch, move it out with hand tools. As long as I have enough room here to move it, work off of, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's plenty of clearance. That's plenty of clearance, Clarence. <laughs> oh, hello there. <laughs> Just don't let me vibing the music while looking against the camera. Ready. <laughs> Tony looked it up. We're getting new brand new seals. We can actually get them, so they're coming now. So that means I get to cut these out. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret to removing a 928 bumper easily. You just cut the whole quarter panel off and you have plenty of access. This is like a spike strip. See all, this, see all those staples? That's crazy. Whoa. You almost got caught. That's that was, why we were safety glasses. <laughs> that was an attempt on your life. I know. <laughs> I did on video too. <laughs> so I had the quarter panel just roughly cut back so I have space to work here. What I need to do is actually clean the inside very, very well because I'm TIG welding this. And whenever you're TIG welding, you're gonna pull any contamination into that puddle. And that includes the back side of the panel. So I need to make sure that's really clean. But that'll happen after I do my final scribe and cut on uh, the outside. So I don't do any extra cleaning, basically. Be gone, foam. <laughs> this stuff's all the devil. <laughs> hey, I got it in that time. It started raining outside, and it's slanted and sitting under the windows down, so <laughs> gotta pull it inside quick. If you don't know what this car is, there's a car above my head. You can hit that button on our last video on the slant nose, getting the engine in and getting it running. I love this car. All right, so I have the quarter panel completely cut off and I have the new quarter panel just clecoed up in place back to where it was. I'm just double checking and my spacing's still good and it is. So now what I'm going to do is go around the panel itself 
I'm gonna trim back any overlap that is past where I want to be. So like for example, up here, this is going in front of the gap here. So I'm gonna trim it back to make it fit. I'm gonna do some adjustments so it fits nicely. Um, and then we will go ahead and begin scribing it to the cut and butt weld it on. And I'll cover more of that process when we get there. Don't mind that. I let him do what he wants. <laughs> it's uh, gentle parenting. Get on there. Get in your hole. Ow! Why is metal sharp? Mm. Why am I not wearing appropriate gloves? <laughs> yeah, see, like, I got, I got to deal with this gap here. Yeah. This is what we're looking for is a nice tight gap that I am able to then scribe and butt weld to. Butt welding is extremely important on exterior body panels. If you don't do that, I am judging you. Not really, <laughs> but never overlap an exterior body panel. Cause if you do an overlap, like say like right here and put filler over that, that's going to be a problem down the road. That's gonna rust, it's gonna shrink in, it's gonna look bad. It might look good off the bat, but it's not gonna fly. So instead we butt weld everything that's exterior body panels unless it's somewhere where it's supposed to be lapped. That's a very, very major takeaway from this video that you should, you should take away is when I do my process here to show you how to get a nice clean butt weld, that you actually do butt welds. <laughs> The undercoating is just peeling right off. That's perfect. Makes my job easier. I can't wait to get all that off so I can weld it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's not gonna be fun. Ooh. I broke Tony's sword. I had a really cool idea. You shall not pass. <laughs> hey, that worked nice. Where I was like, I'll just stab it into the ground and it'll stick. And then I wanted to get a photo of it like in front of the cut quarter panel because that looked kind of cool. Well, while I had it upright and I was taking a photo of it, it went and it fell on the floor. And then the uh, the pommel broke. Obviously, it's to display purposes of the sword. It's not really for like pillaging and murdering, but <laughs> I'm sure at some point he's gonna walk over here and I have to show him. Yeah, you're gonna have to face. I could hide it. under the bed or something. Is there a bed <laughs> I can hide under? It's a car. Yes, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> go <ahead. laughs> so the blue stuff that everyone comments about is this Dicam Steel Blue Spray. You can also get it in like a can, you dip a brush in and brush it on. So what I do is I spray the parent material, which is underneath with lap, like the new panels lapped overneath. overneath. <laughs> I have a new panel lapped over top of the parent metal, right? And I made that blue. So now I can take my scribe and then I can make sure it's nice and tight. I can then make a nice crisp line. As I, and I can use that line then as a guide for my butt weld. It is important to use a scribe when doing a butt weld and for cutting because you wanna have as tight as a gap as possible when you're TIG welding a panel on a car. If you use like a marker or whatnot, the tip of this marker is significantly thicker than the tip of a scribe. And if you do like a marker line, right? If I do a marker line here, which side do I cut there? Do I cut the left side of it? Do I cut the right side of it? Do I cut, try to cut to the center of it? I don't really know, but if I do a scribe line, I will cut just until I remove that scribe line. And that gives literally the tip of a pin, essentially, of a gap if I do it correctly. And chances are I'm not gonna have it absolutely perfect, but it'll be close enough. <laughs> Let's give it a chuck. <laughs> whenever, whenever you have something you don't want, like, ah, oh, this, is, this is junk. Give it a chuck. Give it a chuck. Give man. it a chuck. Continue cutting it after lunch and then I'll be welding it today. What's that? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that! Yeah, it was like that when I found it. What did you do? It was like that when I found it. I didn't do that. <laughs> you ground it! You don't have that on these big gums. <laughs> I mean, keep it under your bed. <laughs> That's where I had all my secrets. <laughs> I'm not going any further than that. I only need I to want to know one secret at a time. I would. <laughs> but 
see, what we do now is you can break off this part here, right. and then it's like a gladiator sword. Let's call me too. Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> Shape is wrong, the length is wrong. Listen, you don't get a good person about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving these little tabs on, because if you followed for a while, you know exactly why, but if you're new here, I leave little tabs for the clickers to grab to, so I can relocate the panel exactly where it was. I'll tack the panel on, and then I can just slide the saws all through, and knock those tabs off, and then we can have a nice butt weld there too. My wire wheel's looking like a dropped lollipop on someone's carpet or something. <laughs> I think it's time for a, for a change. More importantly, it's all clean. That took a long time. <laughs> but I cleaned back pretty far on the flanges too, so it's important when you clean your backsides of your panels for welding, number one, so that it's clean so when you weld it, it doesn't blow up in your face, but number two, so when you slide a dolly up behind and you hammer a dolly it later, that it's a nice smooth surface. Because if you have lumps there, those lumps are gonna translate to your dolly and hammering and it's just gonna be a mess. So I did my best to clean it back roughly an inch give or take here and there, um, depending on the uh, situation going on. But now the whole way up through here, it's nice and clean and that's sharp, but <laughs> clean. So now it's time to uh, fit up the quarter panel. See my scribe and cutting and all that stuff was good. I'm not super happy with this gap here, but I can push it in and it'll work, it's, work itself out. You'll have that on the bigger jobs. <laughs> I can work with it. I'm so excited to see this thing seamlessly on here. Mm. And all nice and planished out and stuff. I bet you guys are excited too, aren't you? Need to do like a Blue's Clues moment. <laughs> you think it's so wide. It's wider than the bucket. I need Roger. If you don't know who Roger is, meet Roger. But you should probably know who he is, because he's important. So we've got it all tacked up. Now, a big key to success when you're welding custom panels onto your car is to make sure your two panels, so your panel you're putting on and the panel that is the parent material, they're both lined up perfectly like this. They're not kind of like overlapping either which way throughout the entire way. Because what happens is when you're welding across here and it deviates up and down, like overlapping, it's gonna cause twisting because that weld, every weld you make shrinks. So even these tacks, right? If I tack this and go and tack and go and tack and go, it's shrinking and it's pulling the panel closer as I go. So I need to make sure that I have a nice clean butt. Now there's parts in here that I don't like, I need to address. Like even right here, right here, you can see I have a little bit of overlap. Yes, I can melt that in and get rid of that and it won't be a uh, overlap, but it might end up twisting on me. As you can see, it's kind of rippling there. I want to go through and I need to hammer and dolly all these tacks and grind the tops off of them as well so they're nice and consistent and smooth. And that's the key. You need to make sure every stage you do through your welding process gets it back to a nice copacetic level plane, essentially. You need to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. If it's not smooth, and then you weld it, expecting it to be smooth afterwards, <laughs> you're magnifying everything that's, that's wrong. You're magnifying it by like five. So make sure everything lines up. The other thing that bothers me this too is when I had to push in here to get rid of this gap, you'll notice that like it doesn't really smoothly transition. There's like a, a, like a step right there. I need to blend that in better. So I'm gonna actually slip a dolly behind there. I, I know I have room. I'm gonna hammer and dolly it to bring it up to where it needs to be before I final weld it. Otherwise, if I final weld that, it's gonna shrink even more. And I'm gonna have a hell of a time trying to get this thing to lay how I want it to be. Information dump. <laughs> So 
So I've gone through and hammer and dollied all these tacks the best I can with what access I have, which is pretty much all of it. I try to make sure all my scribe and cut lines are located in places I know I have rear access to. That's kind of important because if I didn't have rear access to this ridge right here, which is a nice straight flat line, I might not be able to uh, planish, oh, I wouldn't be able to planish that correctly, and this may end up being a warped mess. But when there's rear access, you can fix that, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I also fixed this approach angle right here. I'm gonna call it approach angle, um, so it's much smoother now. So I'm happy with that, and I've leveled out up here and the back edge, so. Now is my favorite time, the welding time. So we're gonna go blast through the TIG welder here and do our best to get the beads nice and flat and uh, not put too much heat in the panel, but keep moving. My technique is to actually not jump around with the welder. If you jump around with the welder, you're gonna get oil canning. If you welded a stitch right here and weld a stitch here, it's gonna heat up and expand and shrink, and it's gonna heat up and expand and shrink, and they're gonna be on different spots, and it's gonna cause all kinds of buckling. Whereas if you just go in a straight line across and chase your heat out the panel, so you start one end and just keep following along and chasing it down the panel, you're gonna have a better result, especially if you have rear axis. If you do not have rear axis, I recommend just kinda doing a little stitch, pausing for a little bit, letting it cool ambiently. Do not force cool your welds. Never force cool your welds. Stop force cooling your welds, you heathens. Don't do that. If you force cool your welds, you're actually causing your weld to be even more brittle and uh, potentially even shrink even more as it just rams back together because when it, the heat causes expansion and cooling causes things to shrink. So you're just gonna accelerate that process and have a bad time if you force cool welds. So stop doing that. Even if you're MIG welding, please stop doing that. You're making your welds even harder to work with afterwards. So I recommend doing a little stitch, pausing for a minute, doing another stitch, pausing for a minute if you're going to not have your access. It's welded on. Now I gotta let it sit so it cools to the ambient temperature. Now I'm gonna force cool it. And then once it cools, I'm gonna hammer and dial it and grind some welds. So this is the Eastwood TIG 200 LCD welder. It's a brand new welder. I love this thing. You can tell I love it because there's stuff all on top of it because I've been using it a lot. So in one month from now, we're gonna be giving away one of these for free to one of you YouTube people. And here is how to enter. It's very simple. So every single Saturday video, including this one, we're gonna have a prompt. And in that prompt, we're gonna ask you to comment down below. And every time you do that, you're gonna get an entry to win this welder. Now, that also adds up. So every subsequent video that we talk about this welder and do a prompt, you get an additional entry. Now you get one entry per video, so you can't comment, you know, 30 times to get 30 entries. However, this week's prompt is to tell us what you would do on your personal project with this welder, or maybe just in your personal shop, what you would do if you were given this welder for free. Now this is also very important. Make sure you like this video or subscribe to our channel and comment your prompt answer to get one entry. If you don't do that, it really hurts this video, which hurts us, and you don't want to hurt us, do you? No, no you don't. So comment down below what you would do with this welder if you won this welder today. have a uh, quarter panel on the car. We still have to put the spoiler end on yet. Still gotta do the bottom part down here. But as you can see, it's a lot of work to even get this far. So that's what we're doing with this video. Um, I also set the quarter panel glass in just to make sure the spacing's right still, and it is. I couldn't like put it in in because you know the rubber's just mutilated. I also don't really want to put it in in either because we're gonna paint the car later. I just wanna make sure they fit. So next we gotta figure out putting the spoiler end cap on here, boxing it off. And then we gotta do it all over again on the other side. 
Thanks for watching guys, drop a like and we'll see you next week.